let's go over how to find the wavelength of light using our diffraction grading. It's 500 lines per millimeter in the light bulb over there. You're going to put the diffraction grading right up to your eye. And when you do, you're going to see the colors. This is the white light that's broken up. We have the first maximum here for each color. Then we have a second maximum over here for each color. Notice the blue is first, goes over to red. On the other side, we have a first maximum here and a second maximum here for each color. Let's talk about the measurements and do the calculations. So how do we measure the wavelength of light? We have the light bulb, we have the diffraction grating, and we have your eye. When you look at the light bulb, you see off to the side the first maximum for each color. Now how does that form? The light passes through the diffraction grating, which has many grooves cut into it, which act as openings for the diffraction to occur. We'll simplify the diagram with just two openings. We'll simplify things further by just looking at the blue light. Each opening acts as a source for diffraction and the waves curve forming the interference pattern. Right down the middle is the principal maximum. Off to each side is the first maximum. Looking straight ahead, we see the principal maximum as the light bulb. If I move my eye over to here and I look along the first maximum, I trace it back and see the blue light over here. And the same when I put my eye on this side and I look at an angle going down the first maximum, I see the blue light. So we need to measure the angle from the bulb over to the first blue light. That'll be the same as measuring the angle from the principal maximum over to where my eye is at the first maximum. So I can measure X and Y and calculate theta. Inverse tangent will get us theta. Now, how are you gonna measure X and Y? Well, you can lay out a meter stick and measure this distance, and then lay a meter stick out this way, and you can measure the X distance out to the blue light by just putting an object out here and moving it over until you get there, and then you can see where it is on the meter stick. Now, if you remember the work we did previously with interference diagrams, you might remember that n lambda equals d sine theta. Well, that's simply based on some trigonometry down here. The n represents which maximum you're at. There's a second and maybe even a third. Well, we're only at the first maximum, so that's gonna be a one. Now, what is d? Well, on our grading, it said 500 lines per millimeter. That's got something to do with d. We need the distance from opening to opening. That means from line to line. Well, that means I need millimeters per line. So I have to invert this 500. And that's the distance from opening to opening. So now you need to take these measurements and go calculate the wavelength of blue light. I'm not gonna go work it out for you because you haven't taken the measurements yet. Well, that was an interference pattern for blue light. Well, there's also gonna be one for all the colors. And we'll take a look at the red light now. Of course, there'll be a principal maximum right down the middle. And we move our eye over and we'll intercept the first maximum. It will appear to be coming from over here. Now we have to measure that angle. Y hasn't changed, but X will now be a little bigger. So you're gonna have a new angle. You're going to still have N equal to one because we're at the first maximum for red light. And D is still gonna be the same as before. And you'll be able to calculate the wavelength of red light. Well then, of course, you could look these up and check them from a spectrum that's published. You could do it all again, going out to the second maximum, and then n would be two. If you do that, you'll find out that the wavelength is still pretty much the same number. Now I'll use the laser light in the same experiment. I'm gonna shine the light through the diffraction grating. And now I can see I've got a principal maximum, a first maximum on each side, even a second all the way out there, and down here. So what I have to do is measure the distance from the diffraction grating to the wall and the distance to the first maximum on either side. And then I can get the angle. Or I can go from the principal maximum out to the second maximum and measure that angle. It's really all the same math. Instead of having a light bulb shining this way through the diffraction grating, we have the laser down here shining this way through the diffraction grating. Now the interference pattern forms on this side and spreads out and projects onto the wall. We just don't have all the colors because the laser is monochromatic. So you'll only calculate the red light. So how do you know exactly what that wavelength is supposed to be for the laser? 
You could go look up laser diodes on the internet and find out what the wavelength is. Well, I hope it works out for you. We're going to talk a lot more about how lasers work later. Good luck.